And joining me now, senior writer for Politico, co-author of Politico's playbook, Jake Sherman, uh, good enough to be with us this morning. And, and Jake, uh, let's pick up then on what we just heard uh, in Juliana's piece with regard to the WikiLeaks dump. In any other election cycle, this would probably be playing as a daily dose of October surprise. Certainly would have been uh, a bigger problem, uh, do you think it's fair to say, for the Democratic nominee? But as Donald Trump continues uh, to loom as something of a black hole, at least from a media perspective here, it just doesn't seem to be having the same staying power that we might have assumed. If this race was close, uh, it would be a huge issue, of course. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of shocking. Donald Trump has talked about how nobody is talking about WikiLeaks, how this is not a big issue. Yet this morning, his tweets were focused on stoking a fight within the Republican Party about uh, uh, alleged voter fraud, widespread voter fraud across the country, uh, and the women who have accused him of sexual misconduct. So to the extent that Donald Trump wants to talk about WikiLeaks and wants to talk about Hillary Clinton, he's not. He's choosing not to, and he's choosing to talk about something else. So uh, an interesting campaign tactic with 22 days left until Election Day. Well, you mentioned tactic, and I, I suppose, it, as if nothing else, seeing the weekend we just saw from Donald Trump, the attacks you just mentioned there, attacks on the media, suggestions that the electoral process has been rigged against him, attacking Saturday Night Live, seeming to call for a pre-debate drug test, uh, which I would think may have been the first time we've heard such a specific request 22 days out. Uh, tactics, strategy, are these fair words to describe what we're seeing? Uh, they're a strategy of sorts, I guess. Uh, you're right. I've not heard about anybody else asking for a pre-debate uh, drug test. But I think, listen, I think Donald Trump has long been torn between his, you know, the professional political class, who he has at, at times criticized, but also at times embraced, and his own kind of instincts to do things his own way. Now, I see this all the time on Capitol Hill uh, with members of Congress who have had a very uh, successful business career, who come up to Capitol Hill and kind of do things their own way, they oftentimes don't get that far and, and, and don't last. So I think, listen, I think he's trying to do things his own way, and he thinks there's str it's strategy and tactics, but uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of watchers in D.C. and across the country would disagree. We've seen uh, the polling now suggest that not only are female voters uh, seemingly fleeing en masse, certainly in the 13 battleground states, we're also seeing 75% uh, of Republicans still supporting uh, the nominee. With 22 days to go here, Jake, however, that number conceivably needs to be in the mid to high 90s for Donald Trump to have a, a, a real chance, it would seem, come November 8th. Is there any sense that something may change with regard to uh, reaching out to a base that he is losing? Well, listen, the, no, there's no, uh, there isn't. And the, the polling has been remarkably um, uh, consistent between five and kind of 10, 11 points, uh, depending on where you're looking. The CBS battleground poll this weekend, which you guys were, were great to do, had Hillary Clinton up six in Nevada, which is a, a big deal. Our poll that came out this morning with Morning Consult had Hillary Clinton up five. Even more importantly, and perhaps uh, a little bit frighteningly, had 41% of people think that this election could be stolen from Donald Trump. We're, we're seeing distrust in institutions kind of like we've never seen before. And, and that's an important element as we get closer to Election Day, because as we look past November 8th, if Donald Trump does not embrace whatever to result, whatever happens on November 8th, we could see 40 percent of the country uh, uh, call this election illegitimate, which would be a big problem for Hillary Clinton as she, if she wins, as she, you know, gets gets going with governing, would be a big problem uh, of, on Capitol Hill with members of Congress who represent large groups of people who don't believe the election was legitimate. It, 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 I've been invoking it all morning. Uh, the esteemed presidential historian Douglas Brinkley of Rice University has said that he can, the last time he saw a major party candidate attack the electoral process, as has Donald Trump, was 18. 60. When you can invoke right. pre-Civil War era presidential politics without irony, it does, if nothing else, lend the proper perspective perhaps to what we're seeing here. And yet, uh, you mentioned that 40 percent. Uh, uh, the siren today in the playbook is uh, news from the Financial Times suggesting that Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has reached out to a boutique firm that in the past has worked to uh, construct television networks. There have been, there's been much debate about what Donald Trump might do 
should he lose November 8th? Uh, might this offer a window into, into solving that? It seems like it would. And as we kind of talk about how people think this is an illegitimate election, imagine Donald Trump having a network to discuss these grievances and to discuss his, his form of policy and politics. I, I think that will be an interesting dynamic to watch come November 9th. Uh, I think both sides at this point are not commenting on the report. But like the buzz in Washington for the last couple months has been that this is going on. And uh, what we thought, we thought we weren't really be able to get to the bottom of it because Donald Trump could fund it himself. But it does look like he is getting ready to launch this television network, uh, as the Financial Times reported this morning, which is, again, something we've all kind of